this word again tonight bring healing restoration strength and the courage again to carry the journey of this year 2023 as we lift up our voice and we pray in jesus name everlasting father we thank you O god as you say men shall not live a bread and loan but upon your word O god tonight we submit ourselves as an instrument we pray god that you use us for your glory that you speak mysteries O god to your people that they may be comfort that they may be strengthened O god to carry the journey of this year 2023 we submit this moment into your hand and we pray spirit of the living god have your way in jesus mighty name we have prayed and somebody says amen, amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah amen. we may be seated in the presence of god amen. tonight uh, i have a topic that uh, i'd like to share with you and which uh, is entitled the rewards of a winning battle Amen. hallelujah Amen. the reward of a winning battle it is true that there cannot be a victory without a battle and there cannot be a battle without an opponent and if there is an opponent there must be a price. If there is an opponent, there must be a blessing. If there is an opponent, there must be something that they want that you got. There must be something that you need to reach that they want to stop you. Behind every battle, there is a price. And the victory over Goliath brought many things to David. The victory over Jacob brought a change of name in his life. The victory of Mordecai over Ammon bring him a position into the palace. The victory of Jesus over Satan oh, gave us salvation. There is a reward behind every battle you overcome. I'll say that again. Not just be behind every battle. But I mean every battle that you overcome. If you lose the battle, you lose the reward. If you lose the battle, you lose the reward. If you walk away from the battle, you walk away from the reward. You walk away from the reward. You see, it is important to know that we have a permanent opponent. And this opponent... Is an opponent that works 24 hours over 7 with even extra time. He does not rest until he make a fool out of you. He does not rest until he stop the promises of God coming into your life. He does not rest until he stop you reaching where you need to go. In 1 Peter chapter 8 and verse... In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8... The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walk about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. When I look into the NLT version of the same verse, the Bible says, stay alert. Watch out for your great... Your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. You see, the devil is not the roaring lion, but he's like the roaring lion. But there is a similarity between a true lion and the devil who's like a lion. It's because the devil also can roar. Mm. He's not a lion, but he can roar like a lion. So, his ability to roar can create something in you to think like it is the lion. Though it is not the lion, there is some similarity. Because with your closed eyes, you can think that it is the lion, but it is not the lion. You see, we need to develop some spiritual senses 
that are called spiritual alarm system that detect any sort of battle that have been launched towards you. The Bible says stays alert because the enemy does not send notice before he attack you. The, 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 the enemy does not send you a reminder that tonight I will invade your house. The enemy does not send a message says tonight by midnight I will walk into your house to disrupt your marriage. But the Bible is asking us to be alert. What does it mean to be alert? Our spiritual senses must be awake in a way that whatever time the enemy chooses to come into your house, find you into a position that you are ready to rebuke him. He is not a lion, but he roars like a lion. It is unfortunate that many times we have to deal with the aftermath of an attack rather than reaching, rather than reacting and preventing it. Many times we are too late to solve a matter before it happens. Because if you are not alert, you see, we set our alarm system to be able to notice any intruders. But if your alarm system failed to notice the intruder, you will notice it, but it will be late. The mess will be done. The things will be taken away from your house. That's the reason why I refuse to be in a case like Jonah. It is after that you have lost everything. It is after the enemy has left you that you need to build from ashes. I refuse to be like Jonah because I need to be alert. Every time the enemy come on my house, he should find me ready not to let him do whatever he wants to do. It is unfortunate that we all have to pick from ashes and to rebuild ourselves. It is true that God will tell David at Ziglag, pursue them. You can recover without any loss. But I know it's been some cases where people lost and they've never recovered. Because there are places where God gave you the ability to prevent. But if you fail to prevent an attack for happening, a recovering process may take longer than losing what was at heart. Walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. Amen. Certain instructions are given only in the spirit and not in the flesh. Judges 14 and verse 1 to 9. We're going to be exploiting this reading tonight. It's a long reading. I'm going to go and we're going to stop. We're going to talk. Judges 14 and verse 1 to verse 9. The Bible says, Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from, this, from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know that it was the Lord's. That he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Verse 5. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now he surprised a young lion roaring against him. And the spirit of the Lord come mightily upon him. 
You see, the roaring of the lion caused the spirit to come upon him. It is the roaring of the lion that causes the spirit to come upon him. The Bible says so he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat. Though he had nothing in his hands. So in this story, while Samson, his father and his mother, they are going to Timnah. Because Samson has found a, 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 a woman that he wants to get married. Though she is from the enemy's camp, if a man loves you, say, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. So on their way to Timnah, the Bible say a young lion roar and come to interrupt the good thing that Samson was on his way doing. You see, as I said, the enemy walked 24 hours over seven. He, he will make sure that he interrupts every good thing that is going on into your life. So, the thing that I do not understand is that there is Samson, there is his mother, and there is his mother. But when the lion roar, we only talk about Samson. The mother and the father are not in the picture. Yeah. It's because sometimes God will take a collective battle mm -hmm. and assign it to one person. Oh, on. Because God knows if I enter into this house, if I let the devil penetrate in this house, there are people that will not be able to face this devil. They are, they are people that are called them the shock absorbers. It's because the devil can attack everybody. But there are some people, if the devil has to attack, he will destroy. But there are other people that God will make sure that they become the front that has to deal with the devil that has invaded the house. So Samson, he is that man. The Bible says, when the lion roared, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. You see, a lion, is it something that you want to face alone? And yet, everyone has a day into their journey where they have to face a lion. Certain battle you will have to go through it alone. You can take some roads where everybody go onto the same road each and every day. But on your turn, you face a roaring lion. Sometimes the problem that you encounter are there to reveal a dimension in us that we ignore. It is until the lion roar, then the spirit of the Lord manifests over Samson. It's because if we all have to face the devil at the same time, it will be difficult for us to develop the abilities to manifest the ability that in is us. Certain things God will allow you to go on it on your own. Because on your own, sometimes God will shut you down. It will shut you down so that you can be able to start looking at what you have inside you. Because solution most of the time are not the things that you are waiting from the outside. But the solution are the things that you have in the inside. It's until you encounter a lion on the road then you know the power of God inside you. It's until you encounter a devil in the in midnight hours when you are alone in your house then you know what kind of prayer to make. There are certain people where they are so used to have collective prayer, to pray in the assembly of the saints, to pray into the family meetings. But when they encounter a trouble, they have no chance to overcome the devil. That's the reason why sometimes God will make your problem so personal. Because he needs you to develop the thing that he's already placed inside of you. If you have the thing of God in you, there are times where God will shut you down. Everything around you in order to release the potential that is in you. It may look like you have been forsaken or abandoned. 
Because the fact is that we have relied so much on other people that we forget that there is a spirit of God that also lives inside of us. And one of the way, you see, one of the way that God does is to give us trial, which we must go through alone, so that our faith can grow, and that we can be able to have our own foundation of faith. Because it is difficult to move somebody who had an experience with God than to move somebody who has a collective experience. A person who had a collective experience can move in and out because his faith, his foundation is not grounded on a personal experience with God. You see, each and every day, if I come and my God is Paco, the day that Paco is not there, if I am used to let him do anything, everything for me, the day that is not around, I will struggle. But if I learn on how to maneuver the same thing that he does, it does not even matter if he's not there. I want to tell somebody, stop relying on other people's experience and start looking to have your own experience with God. Because there is some battle where you are going and this battle will require you to win over them. Because sometimes you don't know but you are the shock absorber for your house. Sometimes you won't know, but you are the shock absorber into your company. Sometimes you won't know, but you are the shock absorber even in your church. But if you have not dealt, you have not developed the things that God has put inside of you, you will always find yourself into a wrong position and wondering, why is this attack only come to me? You see, there are certain things that you can ask yourself, but why is this thing only happened to me? It happened to you because in you there is a potential. In you there is an ability. You see, God will never test you beyond your strength and beyond your power. If it's come to you, that means in you there is an ability to handle it. Let not the devil lie unto you that God has forsaken you. Everything that he allow, Samson with his father, if the lion has to attack his father, his father will not going to make it. But Samson is the shock absorber. God has a remedy for the roaring lion. And sometimes the remedy is revealed until the, 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 roar, the, the, the roaring lion roar. You see, it is until the, the, the remedy to the attack of the lion was the spirit. But what needed to trigger the spirit was the roaring. You see, when the enemy comes to you, the enemy has an ability to trigger things that has to be respond. There must be something in you that shall be able to respond to the triggering of the devil. How can I say this thing? You see, the spirit was already in Samson. But it needed an awakening. So, the mistake that the devil made, the lion made in attacking is to roar. Because once the lion roar, it releases, it unleashes the potential to, to respond to the attack of the lion. In every one of us, there is a potential. And this potential is only waiting for the manifestation of an attack. And sometimes you won't know that you are able to face a giant until the giant scream your name. It, it, it's because, you, you know, there are people like Superman. You see, beyond the vest of Superman, there is a garment. And it's until there is a, a situation that requires him to remove what he has. When you look at him, it can look like a normal and ordinary man. When the devil looks at you, he looks at you like a ordinary man. But he does not know that there is some stuff. If he tries to point to touch it, there is another level of you that will come out. 
then he will be wondering, is this the same man that I have touched? He said, sometime, let the devil not poke you. You see, there are people that are poking you because they don't know what you have. They, they, you look at, they look at you, they say, ah, this guy is he's just simple man. I know him, but you don't know my mystery. You may know me, but you don't know where I sleep. You may know me, but you don't know, you don't know what, what, is, what, is my, what is my covenant with my God. So when the lion roar, the Bible said the spirit of God fall upon him. You see, in Judges 6 and verse 34, Judges 6 and verse 34, but the NLT version, the Bible say, that's the first part of it. Then the spirit of the Lord cloth Gideon with power. You see, in other words, instead of saying fall upon, but it's clothed him with power. Just like Samson, when the spirit of the Lord fall upon him, there is a garment of power that took over. And in this year, being clothed with Jesus, the desire, there is a desire of a garment of power that is looking to sit upon somebody. And this garment is only waiting to be manifested when an attack shows up. The young lion realized too late that I have rolled onto the wrong person. Whoever attacked you by mistake must die by correction. You see, they are thing that attacks you, but the reaction, you see, to every evil attack, there is a corresponding spiritual prevention that stands for you. The Bible say, when the enemy come like a flood, the enemy will never come it will never come in silence. The enemy like to come loud. And you know why he want to come loud? Because the roaring is to create fear. When he roar, he want to create fear in you. And if you are fearful, even if you are strong, you lose. You see, the army of the, 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 the Israel, like the army of Israel, they stood before Goliath but traumatized. They had maybe the potential to kill him because they were the army of the Lord. But because they were traumatized to the size of Goliath, you see, the enemy will only come into an uncommon form. Why? The reason why it will come into an uncommon form is to bring fear in you. And once fear is established in you, even your spiritual senses will stop working. Because fear has a way to cripple your divine abilities. The Bible says we did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Because to every attack, there must be a responsive power that rise and stop the attack that's come on your way. The, the young lion attacks Samson by roaring. The strategy of the enemy is often to create fear in you before he struck. His first attempt is to create fear by roaring. Because fear lowers your defense system. Which is faith. That's the reason why the attack of the enemy is often extravagant. Is often loud. Is often exaggerated. The Bible says when the enemy comes like a flag, the spirit of the Lord raises a standard against him. Because to Every measure of his attack corresponds a precise measure of resistance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, he rises like, the, when he comes like a flood, there is always a standard in you that will over supersede the dimension in which he comes. But what you need to do is to carry the spirit of God inside you. The first thing that the spirit of God does over you is to immunize you from fear. For we do not receive a spirit of fear and timidity, but power. They are things that we have in us that are not of God. Among it, it's fear. 
we do not receive such spirit. We fear you are defeated even before the battle. When the lion attacked Samson, the spirit of the Lord clothed him with power. That he tore the lion apart with his bare hands. We need to learn to deal with certain issue on a spiritual level. And not in our human capacity. How will a man tow the mouth of a lion with his bare hands? This can only be a dimension that we deal with in the supernatural. Even if you see an attack of a witch attacking you by night, you cannot resolve that matter. (laughs) <laughs> you cannot go to police and say this witch come and assault me by night <clears throat> if you are trying to solve a spiritual matter a physical you already dead meat because these witches they fly they can come to your house they can leave Pumalanga they come here without any fly they can leave Congo they enter here they don't Border, border post, they don't pass, they, they don't need visa. They don't need the airport. And you, you're trying to, to stop them. Take your phone and insult them. I saw you tonight. Listen, we must be able to change our strategy. I saw you by night. In the day I'm on my knees. You will not fly again in my house. Because the strategy has to be changed. We need to take, you see... When the eagle want to fight with something, it will take him in the highest. Because these are the dimensions in which he's stable and which he can manage. Leave the devil do things in the natural. Go in the supernatural. Go in speaking in tongue. Go into fasting and prayer. Because these, these are the places where are your secrets. These are the places where you, 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 you are entering into things that the devil, the, the, the realm of the, of the spirits of the darkness world cannot comprehend. But if we are trying to solve spiritual issues, spiritual attack with our human capacity, we have already lost. Certain battle, unless you take them in the spirit, you can never see victory over them. Samson, he is the victim or he is the victor? (laughs) I'll say that again. Samson, he is the victim or he is the victor at the same time? The lion, he is the predator or he is the prey at the same time? Because both depends on how he will react. If Samson let fear upon his life, he become a prey. But the one who attack you, if he does not know who is attacking, instead of him becoming a predator, he become a prey. Because when the lion attacked Samson, he did not know that he was thinking that he was the predator. But in reality, he was the prey. Samson looked like the victim, but in reality, he was the victor. You know, you must let the enemy think that if he enter your house, he will do what you want to do. But once he step in the house, he will find an atmosphere that will not gonna allow him to fly. You see, I have seen this guy who was on, uh, on social media. He was, he, he, he was recording a, 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 a witch. That's flying by the house and fell. And this guy was telling to that witch, leave now my house. But that witch could not even stand. Because they thought that they were attacking somebody. Him that was supposed to be a victim become a victor. And the one that was supposed to be the predator become a prey. Uh, we are walking into a season where the prey shall be the predator. Oh, the prey shall be the predator. The one who wants to kill you is the one that shall be killed by 
you. I want to tell somebody, it is time to rise in the spirit for you to be able to start destroying, to start breaking people that are trying to access your house. They have accessed your house in last month, but let them come again in this month of August. We are Breaking war into the war, into the camp of our enemy. Because tonight, as we are stepping in this new month of August, we are praying to God to give us with a new dimension of the spirit. They will walk like they always work, but this time around, they are not living that place alive. They will be dead. They will be destroyed. They will be broken. Because we have understood, enough is enough. I have been a victim for so long. The enemy has been playing predator over my house, over my businesses, over my work. I have been living like if I'm not a Christian. Christ in me the hope of glory. I refuse therefore to let the devil destroy my business. I refuse to let the devil destroy my family. In me there is a God. In me there is a spirit. Listen. There are certain situations when they happen. They must please release some spiritual anger in you. He think if he roar, he will create fear. But he does not know. He, he roar, but... Because in me there is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So if we have to roar, we will all of us roar in this place. And guess what? The one who can roar more than anybody live inside of me. The king of kings and the lord of the lords. Listen. We have lived for so long. Like, you see, when David, David's running from Saul and found himself in the cave of the Hadulam. It looked like he lost everything. But, and then he realized, I am a warrior. In a cave where he entered with useless men, he come out of it with a army. Yes, sir. Pastor, just as you are preaching, yeah. you say, Abraham was a priest. But there are time where God said, enough is enough. Yes. Abraham will go take Lot as a warrior. As a warrior. It's because in us, they are possi- they, they, they are abilities that has been sleeping for so long. They are sleep because the devil has shown you that this is the way. But there is another way. There is another way. Another way that needs an awakening. Another way that needs a revival. Another way that needs to say enough is enough. I have walked through the root of the devil. And I have not seen progress in my life. This time along, things have to change. Things have to change. When the enemy attack you, let the spirit of the Lord come upon you. You see, you must be able to switch. (laughs) This is my nature. Don't poke. When you poke, you, you see another nature. But this nature is not in the physical. I will not release punches. Uh, you see, you must have a place. Hallelujah. If it is the church, let it be that place. If it's in your house, have a certain corner. That you know if I enter that corner. Oh, shakatamaya. There is something that what is blocking you must make its way. Hallelujah. We must have a place. If it is your bed, there are time where you say, people, uh, you close your phone. My wife, I love you, but go to the kitchen. You stay yourself. If you have to go in the closet, go in the closet. Close yourself up. Certain situations have been in your life for so long. And you tarry with it. You live with it. Certain time, have a holy anger. Because in you, Everything that God lets come your way, you have the ability to to master it. Hallelujah. Go in prayer. Fight that thing. Because when when the enemy attack you, 
the spirit of the Lord come upon you. He had nothing in his hands, but he told the lion with his bare hands. Hallelujah. In chapter, in verse 7, Judges, Judges 14, chapter 1 and verse 7. The Bible say, after, after Samson doing what he, does, he did, killing the, the lion, the Bible say he did not tell his father and his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. After some time, he returned to get her. He turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. So Samson, on his, on his way back from Timnah, he finds honey into a dead lion. Sometimes our blessing comes disguised through some very ugly battle that we had to go through. Sometimes the honey that you see over somebody, life is the result of an ugly fight that they had to overcome in the past. The greater the fight, the sweeter the honey. Not everything that comes to your life come as an obstacle. Uh, I want to tell somebody there are times battle will leave you with marks. It will leave you with disaster. And yet those are the marks that become the essence of what propel you into your highest. Like Jacob, like Joseph will tell, what, what, what you meant for evil, God has turned it for my good. Because there are certain battles, if you choose to quit them, you quit the honey. If you choose to refuse them, you refuse the honey. They are things that you will see in my hand. They are result of where I have been. I have been into an ugly place. And every time that I look at that ugly place, they are something that I remember. It is when the Lord has delivered me from that sickness, today I can still stand. They are things that you have won onto the past. They have become the essence of what you are standing on upon today. You see, when we look at the story of people like Oprah, she had a childhood that was abused. She was abused in her childhood. But she did not focus only on that. She did her best to come out of it, make a story out of it that has propelled her to what she is today. You see, every ugly situation, they can be honey coming out of it. Samson fought the lion. I don't know how the battle could have been. He could have left him with some marks. But on his way back, guess what? There is a reward. You see, every battle that you win over, it leaves you with a reward. That's the reason why you never run away from your battles. Because your battles is your reward. The opening of every great door may sometimes come with challenges. And if you choose to run away from the challenges, you choose to run away from the opportunities that are standing before you. Every trophy is subject to many different disciplines that need to be taken into consideration. And sometimes these disciplines are against even our own will. It is things that you don't want to do. It is things that you don't want, even you don't desire to do them. But because there is a, a goal that you need to reach, you need to comply with them. Every battle field you encounter has a reward behind it. Every battle field you encounter has a reward behind it. If it is, if it has your honey, don't leave it at peace. The battleground that has your honey, don't leave it at peace. F 
fight it, make sure that you fight it until you can have your honey. Because honey grows into the carcass of yesterday's battle. That God gave you the ability to come out victorious over it. Today, if you choose not to go over certain battle, you refuse to have the honey that has been reserved unto you. The Bible says in chapter 9, so he took some of it in his hand and went along, eating, enjoying. <laughs> you see, my fight of, my fight of yesterday has, become, has started to pay me today. <laughs> there are certain sacrifices you have made yesterday. When everybody was doing ABCD, you were preventing yourself to do them. It's not like if you could them do them. But today, you are enjoying your honey while you are moving in life. People, people start asking, but this guy, what did he touch? They do not know that yesterday, they are things that I refused. They are things that I refused to mess up myself with. They are things that I refused to touch. And today, there is a reward. You see, even the temptation of the devil, there will be a reward for it. You see, today we can be tempted to do whatever we want. But because we know that it is, it is things that we're not going to lead, that it's going to lead us astray. We prevent ourselves doing it. It may even be popular. But if you don't do it, you look unpopular. But knows that tomorrow there will be a reward. He took some of it in his hands and went along. Eating, when he came to his father and mother, he gave them some without knowing that these are the result of an ugly story that have happened. Yeah. Today, sometimes we, we, we are reaping harvest. We are sharing it with our family member, though they do not know what we have sacrificed for. They don't know the things that we have done, what we have went through for us to be able to present things on a silver plate. You see, all the things that are presented to you on the silver plates are not easily received. They are things that maybe have cost us, cost our parents, things that we can move and take for granted, but have cost them so much sacrifices. And when we look at it, we look at it like if, oh, it is his duty anyway, without knowing if it is you in his shoes, maybe you couldn't even support, be supposed to be doing it. Hallelujah. Give to his mother. He gave some to them and they also ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey out of the caracas of the lion. You see, not everything that we got deserves an explanation on how we got it. Not everything that we get deserves an explanation on how we get it. By killing the, the, the lion, Samson involved spirituality. Yes, sir. You see, there are things that we gain spiritually that we can't be able to explain it to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are, God can ask you for this job, first for three days, for this position. And then people will be wondering in Joker, but how did you do it? You say, I, I, I fasted for three days. They look at you and say, are you a witch or what? Fast and job. What is, the, what, what, what is the relationship? There is a position, you say you fast. There is a position, God says, flow. You see, not everything that you got deserve an explanation to everybody. They are things that God does into your life. If it involves especially spirituality, leave it to yourself. Because another thing is that the thing that you want to is explain people on how you get them. You don't know the mind of people behind it. Because everybody is not happy about your success. There are people when you explain them or you take them to the things that you do and how you get them. The next thing, the day you go there, you find them there and you they kick you out. You see, the, 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 way, the, the, the way this man that he used to work, and it happened that he, he, he went on holiday. Then he said, okay, I'm going to get one of my friends who just got married. Anyway, let me help him. So he can come 
and fill my position while I am away. On his return, he came back in the company and they said, okay, to his... When he came back, they don't release the guy. The guy, they ask him to say, they say, okay, the work that we're doing will shade it in two. So you do one part, he does one part. And few days along the line, they kick him out. Because you don't know what, when he says what he said. Hallelujah. Certain things must be a mystery. Certain way, how you get things, if it's work for you and God, let it be a mystery. Because there are certain things when you reveal unto them, it is finished for you. That will be all and that will be done for you. Hallelujah. There are certain sweetness that you are enjoying that does not need even your bestie to know about how you get it. There are certain people, if you want them to take them through what the same dose that you have taken, the next time you want to utilize, you want to use that same dose, that dose will be closed before you. Certain result in your life must be a mystery. When God is for you, they are things that he will do that can the human, the human cannot comprehend. How can Annie be formed into a caracas of a lion? Most of the time we find honey bees on the trees in the rock. But sometimes God will do the impossible for you. And these are things that we cannot spend our time explaining on people. They will start calling your name. They will start dropping your faith down because of the things that you're trying to make people understand that cannot be comprehended by human explanation. Because God can prepare a table in the front of your enemies. From within the thing that was supposed to kill you, from that same thing become a blessing. Because there is a reward beyond every battle that you win. In this season, don't let things pass you by. They are things that you need to let pass by. They are things that you need to content yourself and say, I will, let you, I, will, I will let this one go. But God is saying tonight, don't let it go. In you there is potential to solve it. In you there is ability to solve it. If nobody has solved it, you will solve it. If everybody has tried into your family and failed, you are the first one that God is speaking tonight. He said, I have given you my spirit, and my spirit is available to pick you and to rise you up. May you receive this word tonight.